Now, here's what I want you to do. I'm doing this right here. I want y'all to testify to each other. Testify to each other about something God did good in your life this week. It's just a little short one, a little short a couple, of, a couple of sentences. You can be a little louder too if you want to be. And you don't know what, you don't know anything to think about, think about your living, your walking, your breathing. God's got his hand on you. Isn't that awesome? God's got his hand on you. Amen, amen, amen. God's awesome all the time. Yeah. Wait, tell them something else. Brag on God for me. Brag on him. It's okay. He, he likes to be bragged on. Matter of fact, he likes to brag on constantly. It's called glorification. Glorifying. He's always. Y'all doing good. Go ahead, tell something else. That's exactly right. One operator sometimes needs a lot of help. Okay. One of the awesome crowded churches this morning. And it's going to be even greater. Ma'am? DC called me last night. He was upset. He said, Dad, I can't be there. He said, uh, Amy decided we were going to our fa her father's homecoming. Uh -oh. And I said, I said, DC, son, I'm talking on attitude today. If you don't go to that homecoming, you're going to need more than a sermon on attitude. <laughs> <laughs> amen, 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 amen. Get your Bibles. We're going to do some going back and forth. Let's go ahead first and turn to Colossians. Colossians. Not Galatians, Colossians. We had to have Colossians, I mean Galatians last week and yesterday. While they're turning there, you know, we get a couple of weeks we got an awesome thing taking place with another women's mail walk. Yes. Let's just pray about that. I think they might have about 20 women now. They That's know. awesome. Uh, just pray about it. Frank and I are planning on working behind the scenes there. Lord, That's awesome. Just pray for those women, those pilgrims who will be taking that walk. You're going to have fun working behind the scenes. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. Again, I had no idea how all this was going to intertwine. Like with attitude today and next week and last week talking about reaping and sowing. I, I honestly did not put all this together. You know, guys are very good about that. We can we can actually, you, you know, women, you say, what are you thinking? And they're going to give you a whole list of things they're thinking. And then guys will sit there and go, what are you thinking? They go, nothing. You know what? Women, let me just tell you something. It's really true. If a man tells you he's thinking nothing, Okay, a man actually can shut his brain down and just vegetate. He really can. Especially if Bonanza's on, gun smoke, or something like that. He can just vegetate and say some of the stupid, give you some of the stupidest answers. <laughs> That's right. Give you some of the stupidest answers to some of your questions. So just remember, it's okay. If your husband or your boyfriend tells you nothing, honestly, they are thinking of it's okay. All right. Colossians chapter 3 verse 16. Let the word of God dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord, giving thanks to God 
and the Father. By Him, Father, we love you. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace, your mercy. We thank you for this night. We thank you, God, that you're alive and well on the throne, Father. We thank you, God, that you're working in our midst, Lord. I ask you right now, Lord, to touch and anoint. Father, help us to see, to know, to understand your word better than we've ever known. And let us know, God, let everyone, all of us know, God, that you've got something for us all to do. And we're going to have something to do until the day comes that you take us back to heaven with you. There's not going to be a day in our life that we cannot be used by you. And I thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. The church said? Amen. Now, now we're talking about, we're talking about being encouragers. All right? Uh, being encouragers, and we started it a couple weeks ago, and I'm still uh, just kind of moving through this. Maybe another week or two of this, and then we'll be through. We'll go to something else. But, but remember, Jesus put a lot of stock. In his church. He put a lot of stock in us being together as a spiritual team. We're the body of Christ. And being the body of Christ, God has some of us are hands, some of us are fingers, some of us are toes, some of us are feet, some of us are ears, some of us are eyes. We're all part of the body and we all have different things to do. And just because I'm not the ear does not mean I'm not important to God. Uh, there comes a time when the ear is useless when you're trying to grab something. If you're a finger and you're trying to grab something, then the ear is useless. If you're trying to taste something, the ear is useless. If you're trying to hear something, the eye is useless. And so just remember this, that everybody, whatever your part of the body is, and you may be different parts of the body uh, in different areas. You may be in one area with your family, you're, you're one thing. When you're with your friends, you may be another, and it just could be the situation you're in. So, so just remember, God has a lot of stock in us as his body. He wants us to be used by him to carry his message. So in order to be effective, there are certain things we have to do. And of course, one of them is we have to be encouragers. And a couple weeks ago, the very first week, I talked about the value of encouragers. Uh, the people who are encouragers value the church, they value the members of the body. Uh, people who are encouragers, they value what the body values. And people who are encouragers, they actually not just value the body, but they, they also add value to the body. Amen. We're all, we all have a chance to add to the body uh, of Christ. And also, they make their self more valuable. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15 and 15, Therefore, my brother, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. God wants us to add value whenever we get around anybody. We're supposed to be, be adding to, not taking away. Amen? So here we go. Watch this now. Now here, here, here's one of the valuable actions. When I was talking about adding, adding value to the body, here's how you do it. Watch this. Uh, uh, people that are encouragers commit themselves to daily encouragement. This requires moving beyond yourself, moving behind your feelings, moving beyond your fears, moving beyond what you think of people. You know, there's some people that's easy to minister to. There's others that you honestly have to reach hard to minister to. There's some, instead of reaching out to touch them and minister to them, you want to reach out and knock them. I mean, let's get honest. Some people are hard to minister to. But even though they're hard to minister to, God will put you with them because they'll wind up being sandpaper in your life. And so, so, so Hebrews 3 and 13 says, But exhort one another daily while it is called today, is if you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. This it is. But instead, warn, admonish, urge, encourage one another every day as long as it's called today. What's today called? Today. today. On tomorrow, what's that? Tomorrow's, when you're in the middle of tomorrow, what's it going to be called? Today. today. Amen. When you were here yesterday, what was yesterday called when you were in the middle of it? Today. So why it's called today? Then we are, that none of you may be hardened into selfish rebellion by the deceitfulness of sin or by the, the fraudulence or, or the strategy or the trick or trickery that, that, that sin plays on us. And so it's important that we realize, I, I, every time I turn around, I'm thinking, how can I add value to the body? Or how can I add value to my brothers and sisters? And especially if I have one that's hard to get along with, instead of running from them, I said, Lord, tell me how that the time will be right. But help me, even those that are sandpaper in my life, even those that are extra hard grit, help me add value in their life. And if you do that, God will put a special blessing 
and anointing and you'll find yourself intertwining with people that you wouldn't normally intertwine with and even reaching out to people that you wouldn't normally reach out to. So, so, so it's very important. Uh, encouragers commit themselves to daily encouraging people. And, that, and, that, and when you are a daily encourager, that's part of your makeup. And if you're a daily encourager, it's hard to be moody. Do anybody know any moody people around here? In your life? Now, now don't raise your hand, but do you have a tendency to be moody? Okay. Well, see, see, if you want to break the moodiness, if you want to break the moodiness in your own life, then ask God to help you be an encourager. Because if you're an encourager, you may may start out being moody, but before long, it'll it'll it'll, it'll reach inside of you, and, and and it'll help you to get beyond that moodiness. So, so first. You want to be uh, 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 add, add value to the body. You want to commit to daily encouragement. Secondly, and here's a hard one. Somebody say this is a hard one. This is a hard one. Here comes a hard one. If, if you're going to be an encourager, you got to know that little difference. Sometimes it's a big difference, but sometimes it's a small. Y'all say small. Minute. Say minute. Sometimes it's a minute, small difference. In hurting somebody and helping somebody. Wow. If you realize it's going to hurt them, back off. If you realize it's not necessarily going to do anything other than get off your chest, maybe, just maybe, you need to go get somewhere in the closet and ask God to help you get it off your chest with Him. But when you get around that person, ask God to help you to understand there's sometimes. Very, very small difference. A very small difference between helping somebody and hurting them. And realize the things you do and the things you say, kindness versus criticism, can lift the load or add more weight. But let me ask you a question. Do you want to lift the load or do you want to add more weight? If it's your spouse and, and your spouse is already making you so mad, you really, you, you're just really ready to, you know, it's like the guy, the guy was sitting in the kitchen or sitting in his, in his chair in the living room and his wife hit him in the head. Hit him in the head with a frying pan. She said, what's that for? And she said, look at this. And she had a, had a note in her hand. And the note in her hand, she said, I was washing your clothes and I pulled this out of your jacket. And, and it said, it said, it said, darkness. And he said, oh, honey, I was at the racetrack today, and that was the name of the horse. I bet on Doris. And he goes, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. And about a week later, she had a bigger frying pan, and she beat him with that frying pan. When he woke up, he said, what was that for? She said, your horse just called. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> know the difference. In hurting and helping in the situation. So I turn to Isaiah 50, and you'll have to turn if you don't want to, I'll read it to you. But Isaiah 50, chapter 50, verse 4 says, The Lord hath given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He awaketh morning by morning, he waketh my ear to hear as he as the learned. That's Isaiah 50 and 4. Uh, the servant of God, the servant of God says, The Lord has given me the tongue of a disciple and one who is taught, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him who is weary. He wakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear to hear as a disciple as one who is taught. Thank God. God, help me to hear from you and help me to discern in order that I can help people. My fact, if you want to help people, you know, you know most important, the two most important qualities you're going to need is our first, first most important ingredients. Two, two ingredients. Number one is you're going to have to know the Word. And number two, you're going to have to let the Holy Spirit use you. Because if you don't let the Holy Spirit use you, you, you when you're talking with somebody, when you're counseling with them, when you're encouraging, whatever, the Holy Spirit can help you to discern and help you to know what to say and how to say it. And, and, and if you don't let the Holy Spirit in, if you don't let the Word in, then it's just your advice. I mean, it's pretty cool. Stitching, a stitch in time saves nine. That's pretty cool. Yeah. But I, I know, uh, I just had a loss in my family. So stitching time saves nine? Okay. Or birds of a feather flock together. Well, that's pretty cool too. But you know what? I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm having problems in my marriage. 
You know what I'm saying? So when somebody comes to you like that, don't, don't come up with some kind of wise mess. Know the Word of God and let the Holy Spirit guide you, lead you, direct you. Let the Holy Spirit minister through you. And as He ministers through you, then you can minister to them. Psalm 119. Psalm 119, verse 50. It says, there, This is my comfort and my affliction. Thy word hath quickened me. Or your word has revived me. Or has given me life. So if you know that word, put it down deep in it, dwell richly within you. So that when people are hurting, when people need encouragement, you can encourage them. Not just some little witty saying. But you can actually give them the word and the word will be in season and the word will make a difference in their life. So number three, that first that they commit themselves to daily encouragement. Two, that there's a difference between uh, 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 hurting and helping people. And, and number three, encouragers initiate the positive in a negative environment. We're talking about this morning, attitudes. When you're an encourager, God will use you you can ask them to be used by God, no matter how negative the situation is, you can come in and find something positive in that situation, and you can give it to them. You see, see, life and death are in the power of the tongue. Amen? Well, we talked about this morning, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice, let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving that your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. You see, it's, it's, we have to know, have some positive, no matter how bad things are. And I, I, I talked about, I can't remember when, because it's all kind of falling all together now. But I don't know if it was on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Tuesday night, I can't remember. Some of y'all have already heard this so many times, you can say it without me even having to start talking about it. But some of you may not have heard that. And that is, you have a choice in life. You can be a thermometer or you can be a thermostat. A thermometer, all a thermometer does is it gauges it gauges what's around it and it reflects in it. So if a thermometer comes into a, a, bad, a, a bad situation, a thermometer reads the bad situation and reflects in it. If you're about to freeze to death and you're coming in from outside, it's 20 degrees outside, it's 30 degrees inside, you want it to be 65, 70 degrees, then, then that thermometer is not going to do any good. All that thermometer is going to do is tell you it's 30 degrees in here. The one outside says it's 20. The one in here says it's 30. It can do absolutely nothing about the problem. All it does is it, 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 it reads the situation, it gauges it, and then it just gives back, reflects what it is. Some of us are very good at being thermometers. I mean, uh, yeah, thermometers. Some of us are very good at giving back what we see. And you know what? There is times when that's necessary. There is. But when somebody's hurting, when somebody's in desperate need of a touch from God, they don't need you to reflect back. They already know what's going on. They already know how bad it is. They need you to be a thermostat. Thermostat comes in, sees that it's 30 degrees, and then wherever it's set, that's where it goes. And so it, it does something about it. It changes the environment. So if you're if you're only uh, 30 degrees in here, but you want to be 65, the thermometer, it just says 30 degrees. That's it. But the thermostat, it goes to work and it hooks everything up and gets it running in order that it can be 65 degrees in here. Now the same way, when you come in on a situation, like I said, there's times where, 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 where you need to gauge what's going on. Yes, you might even can reflect. And a, and a thermometer, I mean a thermostat has a thermometer on it and so it does reflect what's going on around it. But you'll see with a thermostat, a thermostat, when it's correctly uh, 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 set up, it will actually, as it's climbing, it will it'll, it'll exactly tell you what's going on and it will pick things up. God has called us to bring positive and negative. We are not just to reflect, we are to react. And as we react, then we can come in. If you can think of something positive, they're telling you, well, my husband, he's done this, 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 this. And I said, well, you know what, love? Your husband's a good provider. Your husband's, you know, he's there for your family. Your husband, he, he takes you out. Your husband, they go, well, I didn't think about it that way. Think about it that way. Well, you know what? Maybe he's got some good qualities about him. If somebody comes to the office and they're having a hard time, here's what I do. 
I, here, here's what I do. And I've, just, I've done it the last couple of weeks from several times. I take a piece of paper and I draw a line right down the center. And on this side, on the, on, on the left side, I say I want you to put down things that you can do absolutely nothing about. And then put it down there. I said on this side, I want you to put down things that you can actually make a difference. You can do something about it. Put it on that side. And I said, okay, here's why you're so frustrated. You're trying to fix stuff over here in this column. And you can't do a thing about it. On the bottom, put trust God to take care of it. So when you start thinking about this problem that you can do absolutely nothing about, think here's what a thermostat will do. Tell you stuff like that. And so now they're going, wait a minute, you're right. I can't do a thing about it, so I'm going to trust God. So if you quit working on what you can't fix and work on what you can fix, at the bottom of that one, put trust God to give you strength and anointing to fix it. This side, trust God to give you strength to handle it. This side, give God gives you strength to fix it. And if you do that, then what happens is you won't be so frustrated and the negative, you brought the positive into the negative. Again, that's what you're supposed to be. That's, that's what a, 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 a thermostat will do. A thermometer just says, well, you, you're in a tight spot, boys. We're in a tight spot. You remember the movie? He said, we're in a tight spot, boys. Uh, my old brother bar out there, he kept saying, whenever well, shooting down the barn and burning it up and trying to run them out, he kept saying, we're in a tight spot, boys. We're in a tight spot, boys. That was not how to get out of anything. That was just, he was being a, a, a thermometer. So, so here we go. I'm fine now. I, it's like I take it slow tonight. An encourager realizes the importance of man. You know, again, we'll tell people, we were thinking about you. They were sick three or four weeks ago, and they didn't hear from us. And we said, we were thinking about you and praying for you. Well, you know what? That's nice to know, but three or four weeks ago when that was hurting, that would have really been nice to know. Or somebody said, well, you know what? I really like the way you do such and such. I really like the way you handle these problems. I really like the way you do whatever. And, and remember, a blessing, a blessing is a blessing restricted or a blessing constrained if it never comes out of your mouth or if it never comes from your fingers. As long as you hold the blessing in, whether the blessing is something you give away or whether the blessing is something you say, if you never give it, then that person can't receive it. And so if that person can't receive it, that person does not know right now, in this moment, they need some help. And they need somebody to say something, you know, and sometimes they say, well, it just seems so minor. Well, you know what? God can give you the exact words, the exact thing to say that would have lifted up that person <clears throat> and changed their life. So, so it's really important. Remember, again, <clears throat> again, if you, we're, we're going to look at uh, Isaiah 50 again. There it is. God has given me the tongue of the learned that I might should know how to speak a word in season to him who is weary, to him that is distraught, to him that has had all it can take, to him that has, has, has expelled all his energy and now has none. God has given us this ability. And so, so again, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. You know, again, that's why it's important. When somebody tells me they've heard some bad news, then I immediately try to get to them. If it's very bad news, I try to get to them. If there's been a death, I try to get to them immediately. What can I necessarily do? I might not can do a thing. But if I can get to them, at least somebody can get to them and give them some words from the Lord, or give them some encouragement and pray for them. Somebody that's not necessarily in the heat of the battle. It's important. Remember, it's one thing to say, I was thinking about you. It's another thing to pick up and say, I'm thinking about you. All right? You want to help somebody, you're not going to help them three or four weeks down the road, a year down the road. So, well, I was praying for you during that. Oh, really? Thank you. Where was the encouragement I was going through? Well, where was it then? So, remember, the importance, if you're going to be an encourager, remember the importance of now. Now. Now, God has anointed us as his children for now. Now. Y'all say now. Now. So remember, if it's nothing more than a text, 
You want to text somebody and say, thinking about you, praying for you, give them a Bible verse. I got a call last night uh, from somebody that they gave me their phone number a couple of years ago, and I had them on Mighty Army. They called me last night. And so I said, hey, Tom. It was not Tom. It was a lady. And it was not his wife. And so I said, she said, who's this? And I said, this is Pastor David. And I said, this is not Tom or Louise, is it? She said, no, it's not. And I said, I'm sorry. They had this number, and they were on this mighty army list. And, and, and you know what? I, I, I'll take you off. I'm sorry. I didn't realize somebody else had it. I'll take you off because of these cell phones, the numbers change so much. I said, I'll just take you off. And, and, and I'm sorry that I bother She says, no. No. Leave me on. And I said, well, okay. She said, you just don't know how many times that, that I was walking along or, or doing something, and then my phone dings, and I looked down, and there was the word I needed to hear. And I said, well, praise God, sister. She said, do not take me off of that list. But in the same voice, <laughs> last week, somebody said, this is not him, and I don't appreciate it. Take me off. So I said, okay, I'll do it. It's not a problem. <laughs> I, I, I don't mind. I'll take you right off. But, but again, people need you to be proactive in your blessing. Be proactive. Proactive. If it's nothing more than saying I'm praying for you, if it's nothing more than a pat on the shoulder, if it's nothing more you walk by and go, go, I hear you having a hard time. I'm here with you. Or if you need me, just call me. Or, or, or go up to them and go, you know what? I'm praying for you. I pray for you every night. You know what? Again, you may not have anything to say or think you have anything to say that's important, but an encourager understands the importance of now. Let me go into some mass walks. It, it, it amazes me. Guys call me and say, can we go back in and talk? And I said, what you want to talk about? They said, well, well, you know, these guys started talking about these things and started doing their talks, and all of a sudden they hit me between the eyes, and I realized I need to do this, this, or this, and this. Can, can you help me? And sometimes I go, no, but I'm praying for you. Then there's times I go, have you considered this? And I go, wow. But still, I don't go, I'll see you later. Let's go. Let's go talk. That's, that's good. Matter of fact, they were doing a skit in D.C. They had D.C. They went to my room and took my clothes, my jacket, not my pants, but my jacket, and brought it to D.C. And they took about a bunch of talcum powder and they talcumed his hair so it was white. I was helping somebody. And I was not in the room at the time when he was getting ready to come out. They run all over that camp, Camp Carolina, to find me. And they said, come on now. And I said, I'm supposed to be praying for this person. And they said, we'll send somebody to pray for him. Come on now. And I said, what is wrong? I thought they had somebody had to cast a demon out of something. I don't know what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> and I jumped. I jumped in the truck. They carried me to the place. As soon as I walked in, I heard him say, and now here's Junior. Here comes D.C. walking out like me with white hair, with a jacket on, going, you're looking good, you're looking good. I know you can't help it. Anybody tell you you look good and green? <laughs> and, and it was awesome. It was absolutely awesome. It was one of the greatest encouragements I ever had. I'm telling you, it was absolutely awesome. But, but I watched him as he imitated me, and as he imitated me in that setting, it encouraged me for several reasons. One of the reasons was, I got a chance to see a reflection of encouragement. Now, are you reflecting encouragement? It's a big question. We're going to close. We're going to close in prayer. I want you to remember, you can think all day long. And you need to think all day long. You need to pray all day long. Like I told some of my family just a couple weeks ago, as long as you're thinking it, nobody knows that you've got to be the blessing. You've got to tell them. You've got to tell them. Well, they ought to know. No, they don't. I didn't. 
Well, they know it better than others, don't they? If somebody's in battle, they need somebody to be an armor bearer. Somebody come up and say, I love you. I'm praying for you. I see you struggling. You let me know if there's anything I can do to help. Whatever. But you, you just watch. And use the opportunity to be an encourager. Father, we love you, Lord. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace and mercy. We thank you, God, that you're just an awesome God. There's absolutely nothing impossible for you. God, you've got everything under control. You've got everything together. You've got it all. And Lord, I ask you right now, Father, to touch us, Lord. To help us, Lord, to understand the importance, Lord, of being an encourager. Help us, Lord, to daily commit ourselves to encouraging people. Help us, Lord, to know that little difference in hurting and helping. And help us, God, to initiate positive when we get to the <laughs> environment. And help us to realize the importance of now. 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 Let us encourage people, Lord, as we're being encouraged. And we thank you for what Paul said, that I'm encouraging people with the encouragement that I have received. God is helping us. Now we need to help others. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for it. Is there said? Amen. 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 Y'all are looking good. Anybody tell you you're looking good? We can't help it. <laughs> I did it. I did it. I walked in, I walked in to the segregation of the night. These were the guys who were in these uh, eight by ten rooms for uh, uh, or, or six by eight rooms for uh, 23 hours a day for whatever everybody would be in deciding where they're going to go. And I walked in, but I didn't think about it. One of the guys said, Are you keeping it to yourself? Yeah. You laughed. <laughs> yeah, after I said it, I said, That's not good. So I said, Let me ask you a question. Is the Lord blessing where you at? He said, Yes. I said, That's what I wanted to hear. Remember, everybody has an opportunity. To make somebody's day. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand. Brother Don, will you dismiss us with prayer, please? Lord, we do thank you for your blessings, Lord. We thank you for your word tonight. Let us hide it in our hearts, Lord, that we can glorify you in all things. So we thank you for our blessings, Lord, and we pray for each and every family here tonight, Lord, that you go guard and guide and direct. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.